Hey guys, Michael Neff here, Director of Gear Sports, and this is the third video in the series of shaft videos that we're doing. There's seven total, and this one's on shaft twist. And um, down here under club graphs, you can go to shaft twist and basically see uh, that the there's not a lot of shaft twisting going on. We give it to you in degrees, and this would be positive 10 degrees and negative 10 degrees. And um, at impact, you can basically see that they're both in positive. So you're going to see positive shaft twist or what we're calling clockwise, okay, or towards the shaft. So this is basically the, uh, this would be positive. So the shaft is twisting kind of counterclockwise in this case. And Jonas has a little bit more shaft twist than Ricky. A degree is not a lot <clears throat> of movement um, when it comes to the shaft. Um, it's enough to move uh, the head and the angle of attack, um, but there's not a one-to-one -one relationship there. So um, Ricky is playing with a very, very stiff shaft, a whiteboard that has very low torque, and Jonas's shaft, from what I understand, is a blue board. I don't know how that was tipped, um, so I can't really give you the exact number on his, but I know that um, Ricky plays extremely low torque stuff, and this driver would be fitting him pretty well because he's Basically, he does not want this face, um, you, you know, he does not want a lot of, because he's offending the shaft and his grip speed is very low and the club head speed's higher and the grip, the closure rate's very high, we probably want to slow down that shaft twist. We don't want a lot in there. And um, Jonas most likely wants some shaft twist to um, help square that face up because he kind of has this late kind of dragger here. Um, has a much slower closure rate and lower grip roll. Um, he probably needs a little more shaft twist to square up the club face. Um, and I don't know if it's going to contribute whatever shaft I put him in. I don't know how much that's going to contribute. I don't know if it's going to help him that much or enough um, to help because usually when we soften that that torque and we're going to soften the shaft too and then other things happen. So if I, sh I don't want to soften this shaft too much in Jonas's case um, because then I'm going to start to deflect more and my face mapping could get a little bit off. I would probably consider maybe going a little softer with Jonas here because the ball's high on the face and um, I it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt us to have the angle of attack go up a little bit and the path go a little closer to zero um, and I've got I got a really low deflection, so he does not offend the shaft hardly at all. So um, we could probably go with something a little softer to help square that face up, get the ball down on the face. And um, I've got plenty of my, my ratio so low and my deflection so low that he can get away with something a little softer without losing um, without losing uh, dispersion or without getting too much dispersion. Ricky, on their hand, is offending the shaft much more. He's moving the shaft much more, um, and he's closing the grip. He's rolling the grip a lot more. The closure rate's much higher. The grip speed's very slow, but his club is very stiff, and that's why these numbers appear to be similar, um, where his is not. So again, these kind of this shaft twist is is uh, is relevant. We are giving you that measurement. It's in positive and it's from if you're looking straight down it's in clockwise and um, again kind of relating it to what kind of swinger you have here whether it's kind of more of a snapper or a swinger or a, you know cracking the whip earlier than or later um, could affect how much torque you're going to need to put in that club um, so anyways that's shaft twist <laughs>